And there's our fun project just arrived. We shall see what's wrong with the victim. Oh, here it is. 05 Honda Accord. And the problem is, it won't go into gear when the engine's running. And the reason is, it's a 5 speed. We got a little problem with the clutch. So let's check it out. Here's our three pedals. There's the clutch pedal. Oh, that's not good. Nope. So to peek up at that, I had to take off the front lower piece of the dashboard here. Let me show that. That's right here. That was a pain. Disconnected the um, what is that sunroof switch which plugs in right here. So that's disconnected. That allowed me to get to this shield down here, this cover, which pops as three, three pins, one, two, three snaps. And then this pulls out. So we can go take a look at the clutch pedal. And here it is. Okay, that's where, that's not me farting, that's just a, my shoulder rubbing on the leather. All right, here. Here's our issue here. So I've got to remove this pin, uh, this cotter pin to get the pin out to disconnect the pedal from the clutch master cylinders right here. It's defective on the other side. Maybe I'll get to show that in a little bit. If you're interested, uh, if you ever want to know why you've got to push in the clutch pedal in order to start the car, well, this is a safety switch right here. This this unit. So if this is in, it will not allow the ignition to occur. So when this pedal is up, it won't start. That's why you got to push your clutch in. This pin pull, pushes out allow you to start your car so what I'm gonna do is there's two nuts holding this clutch master cylinder in they are 12 millimeter I'm gonna use this quarter inch drive with some extensions on it got like a four inch or six inch um, ball head and then I've got a six inch straight I've got a swivel here and what I do is I put some electrical tape around it so that way when it bends it stays in position. If you don't use tape a lot of times these flop around. The socket will flop around and uh, you don't have good control of it. And this is a 12 millimeter deep quarter inch drive socket. So I'll get those two bolts out and that will loosen everything up from this side. Of course I'll get the cotter pin out, get the, the uh, other pin out and uh, We'll get to the next fun part of the job. So, in the meantime, you guys stay tuned. 59 Cadillac, 390 cubic inch, big block. I'm making a coffee table out of it, so you guys will see that coming up next. Sometime down the road soon. i got to get the glass for the top. So, let me get this loosened up. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get this cotter there. pin out now. We're under the car by the clutch pedal. I've got these bent small needle nose. I'm trying to grab onto it. Let's see if I can get it. Oh boy. It's shaky cam day. Uh, there it is. Got it. Well, that was fun. Okay, now I'm going to push this pin out. Am I on? There we go. Pin's coming out. Let's go, pin. I'm grabbing it from the left side. Oops. There it is. Oh, that sucker's out. Now this is disengaged. This should push in and the pedal will stay up. Let's see. There it is. It's got some resistance. Okay. We're at the front of the car and 
I want to show where I got my evidence to find the problem. So this is the clutch master cylinder. Well, that's the fill. It's actually way, way down. You see the light down in the back down there? Well, I looked in there and there's a type of flange and it has it should have three bolts or three screws there's one there I barely got it lit up well I'm looking right here and there's one missing and I can see some fluid there so what brought me to that was that runs a brake line or hydraulic line down here to the slave cylinder there's the uh, clutch slave cylinder. I have a wrench on there and I have this hose hooked on to this vacuum pump. So I'm applying vacuum. I break open the bleeder valve, apply vacuum, and I'm hearing air back here being drawn in. No good. Shouldn't be any air drawing in. Plus I had a lot of bubbles and fluid in the or bubbles in the fluid that came out. So I knew there was air in there, but I could hear it. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the clutch master cylinder and the slave cylinder. Because if that one is gone, this one isn't far behind. And uh, if you got a problem with this on a higher mileage car, it's going to be another tow. So to avoid that, we do it all at one time because we can bleed the system all at once. So that slave cylinder pushes on this bar here, which is connected to the throwout bearing, which goes to the pressure plate, which disengages the clutch, the clutch disc. So when there's air in the system and you step on the pedal or you don't have much pressure, like this has zero pressure, this pin isn't being pushed out to the right to disengage the uh, clutch disc. So that's the problem. So got some parts this is going to be a fun one after I get this reservoir off here I'll get a shot down in there of that clutch master cylinder and we'll see what's going on hopefully you can get a better view all right I'm removing the reservoir I've got a 10 millimeter quarter inch socket down in there and there's one bolt one bolt that holds it in. I don't want to lose that bolt. It's right. It's loose now. Let's see if I can get light on it. And you guys can see. There it is. That rusty one. So I'm going to reach down in there now and grab that. We'll get this thing out of the way. All right. Look at that. There's that bolt that's missing. There's one there. There's one down at the bottom, and that one's missing. So that seal's not tight. Oh, somebody sabotaged us. Yep. Yeah, we've been sabotaged. Let's get this thing fixed. Got the reservoir out of the way. Got that 10 millimeter bolt out. It attaches right there. And you can see the culprit. He's down in there. Way down in there in the firewall. So... To get that out, I, there is a fitting. Let me see if I can get it. See that line right there? And then there's the fitting. So for the hydraulic line, I can't get in there. My hands won't fit back in there. It's too tight. And I could maybe get it unthreaded, but starting it would be a bear. So that line runs down, down here along the firewall. And back over to this area, comes out right, let's get the light on it, right there is the, is the next fitting. So what I did was, I got this bracket disconnected for the, just to make room. This is the throttle cable and the cruise control cables. Got this disconnected, another 10 millimeter right here. So I'll flop those back. This will get pushed over here. And then this, well, they can both go back behind this, this uh, hose there. 
Okay, so now I got a clear shot down in there. We can see what's going on better. So here it is. You got a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter thread here. I already loosened it. It was kind of tight. Snap it loose. Flare nut wrench is the best thing to use. And uh, that line is free now, see? And there's some fluid dripping out. I got a container down below to catch the fluid. The uh, hydraulic fluid, brake fluid. So then that is attached. Let me see if I can get this on film. There it is, right there. Let's get a light on it. There's a, it's kind of like a wire tie, a plastic strap around. That's the same line that runs along here. So I cut that with a, a, a pair of small cutters, very small. And then there's one more that I can't get on film. I knew that, and it's way down in this area. Where's my finger? Okay, back this way. Underneath the master cylinder, back behind the firewall. So I'll get that cut. I'll loosen those two bolts, you know, that inside the car. And the whole unit, I'm hoping to pull out in one piece. So we'll see how that goes. I told you it was going to be a fun project. Okay, I'm wiggling on the unit now. Pulling it through the firewall. Of course, you can't see anything because I can barely fit my hand in there. Oh, this is good stuff right here. Okay, let's see where we're at down here. Get this out. Oh boy, here goes that. Oh boy. Well, it's definitely wiggling. It's loose. Oh yeah, here we go. Look, look where it's at. Oop. Now we're down here, see? Ooh. Expect to have fun doing this. That's what it's all about. All right. Try not to get too much brake fluid all over the knife. My camera here. Okay, I'm still wiggling and pulling. I'm tugging. I'm looking for the flashlight. Skip the flashlight. That's what fell down in here. Here it is. Uh, so I can show you guys. Here, now it's down in here. See, it was back in there. In fact, there's the. Uh, let's see. There's where it fits through the firewall. That hole. See, isn't that nice? Okay. Not to bend this brake line up too much. Uh huh. All right, I'm gonna pull the camera, put the camera down, and we don't want to miss a happy ending, so it's still down in here. It gets a little bit better every second. Oh man, it's down in there. I've got it. I've got hoses and lines and tigers and bears oh yeah oh look at this look at this jeez a little more almost there hope i'm not shaking the camera too bad oh boy look at this Well, it's right here. I'm going to put here the camera Here we go in. again. So I took the uh, air cleaner box off that goes to the intake. 
remove that so that this line wouldn't be in the way. So let's see if I can get it out now. Now well, we're getting closer. Now I'm see, now look. I'm caught up in the light. The clamp is caught into the lens. Look at that. It's always something, it never fails. You know? Alright. Back to this. Here it is. Got it all together. Look at that. <laughs> oh man, that was fun. Remove the air cleaner box and you'll be able to get it out. Now I got fluid dripping onto the bowl. So let me put the camera back uh, down. Sometimes it feels better just to be separated. Okay. Got it out. Wonderful. There it is. So. Let's take a look at this missing screw. That's pretty crazy. And you can see there's, I don't know if you can see it on film. Let me get some light on it. Looks like the, there's an O-ring or some kind of gasket is squeezed out from there. Grab the flashlight. I'm just going to make a real long video today, so let's go for it. See that? A little rubber piece in there. That is strange. Oop, get it in focus. That's right there. That's strange. You can see it right in there. It's real small. So I believe that was definitely the problem. So we'll have to transfer this stuff over. We were, this hose, this line. Oh, this is kind of neat. Let's go over this while we're here. This brake line, you guys are doing this. It has a U-shaped pin that goes through right here and comes out on the back side. So we'll have to press that out and this whole fitting will come right out in one piece. You don't even need to loosen this. And then we'll transfer that over to the new guy. The new kid on the block. You see the two holes where that will fit through. Right there and back there. So the part looks, uh, looks like it's the right size. Get to it's been a few minutes since I filmed, so let's get an update. I got the air box is back on here. And right on here. I got the new clutch master cylinder in, if you can see it right there. There it is, brand new. It's been filled, and then what I did was bled it here at the slave cylinder. And what I wanted to do before replacing the slave is to make sure everything was working good and yes I've got pedal pressure so I bled it out with the air bleeder and uh, or the vacuum bleeder and everything's looking good all this is connected back down in there that fitting where were we right there that's good that's where I originally disconnected so we'll get to the slave cylinder we'll put that in what I did want to show is I looked at the the old one and then I noticed the bolt didn't fall out let's get that get in there see that rubber o-ring or gasket the bolts sheared it snapped there's the back of it right there see the threads they're kind of a gold color okay. these are all still in right that bolt is sheared off in there that's pretty crazy. I've never seen that before. So I'm not sure what happened, but it's definitely bad. So it's good. We got pressure now, and I'll get to the next step. We'll get to the slave cylinder. I need to adjust the clutch pedal, and that's by pulling that piece, that adjustable piece right here where the pin goes through. By backing off this nut, I think it's a 12 millimeter, and then this threads on this way and that way so to bring it in or bring it out and in my case I'm going to need to bring it out because I want more pedal I've got too much play so we're going to take some of that slack out so I'll loosen this on that one pull that pin back out 
thread this out and this is just like a locking nut right here and just tighten that up against here so that this can't move or spin and on to the next one I mounted the clutch master cylinder in the vise so I could try to find out what really went wrong I knew that bolt head had sheared off so I decided to take these bolts out I used this special bit I forget what they call it. it's a Torx 35 with a it's like a hole in the middle of the thing anyhow I think it's a VT 35 so anyhow I loosen this up I already went in there and when I did I'll show you what I found so this will be interesting I've never seen one like this before go bad like this so I remove this plate and then we saw before when I first opened it there was a bunch of junk in here like uh, sludge and stuff and this o-ring this black o-ring was laying out over it had squeezed out from pressure over top of where the broken this is the broken bolt it's hanging out like this so I took that out and there's a clip in here took that out and then we got this plate and as I was wiping it down I noticed a see if I can pick it up here a hairline crack you see it it's left of center I was, when I was cleaning I was pushing on it I could see there was pressure there saw some movement so what I did was took that out let me grab my magnet check this out yeah not good that split that disc that pressure disc I think it's called pressure disc split in half so that's why it definitely wasn't holding pressure and now we know what I think the problem was the fluid was very old and there was a lot of moisture in the brake fluid it's kind of a lesson that people don't really think of in their hydraulic systems with their brakes or their hydraulic clutches brake fluid will absorb moisture and when you when it's new it's nice and clear and a little bit yellowish in tint well old stuff turns brown and kind of rusty looking and that contains moisture in it so brake fluid is really good for absorbing moisture and over time I think that moisture built up in here the thing was froze so there was some icing in there when the clutch was applied that snapped because it couldn't take the pressure obviously it can't compress ice it can compress fluid that's not frozen and when it did all that pressure just cracked this disc and uh, shared that bolt because the plate the plate had nowhere else to go that was the weak spot so that thing just snapped right off so now we know and we learn a lesson once in a while uh, change your fluids there's a reason for it isn't that right Taz yeah he says that's right he likes when stuff goes wrong to remove the slave cylinder, I'm going to put a 10 millimeter flare wrench on this fitting here. And then there's a larger nut on the bottom. That's a, I think that's a 17 millimeter. So I'll hold this one down here with the 17 millimeter while I turn the 10 millimeter to disconnect that. Then there's two bolts over here. I think these are 12s or yeah, 12s or 13s. And they get removed and the whole unit will come right out so then it'll come out this pin here will come out of the fork which goes to the throw out bearing the clutch fork alright let me show you the, what I mean here by the threads so that brake line comes in here and this has to be held in with a 17 otherwise it's going to keep spinning let's get to it alright see how I have the flare nut on that bottom not, and I just have an open end wrench right now because I already cracked this loose. I just wanted to demonstrate. So then you just turn this like this. And that holds it in place. 
loosen this up. I have a catch pan down below. We'll catch the uh, brake fluid. And get the new one in. 12 millimeter hex with the 3 8 uh, extension here and some swivels. And you can see I'm down there. And I got both of them loose, so that's it. I'll get it out. Just wanted to show that step. The old one is out. That's what it looks like. These things are common to start leaking from the seal. Usually back up under this boot. I'm not sure if I can peel it off with one hand right now. There we go. Um, they'll leak over time. So that's why I'm replacing this now. That one doesn't even look too pretty. So anyway, there's the new one. Here's the replacement. And what I did was I loaded up the, uh, the end of it here with some anti-seize. You can use some, some good grease on there too. So you want to make sure when that goes into the fork, this piece here, it fits in to the fork. It doesn't, you know, doesn't bind, and it'll last a lot longer. It won't wear out as quick. So let's get that in. I'll put it in opposite of the way I took it out, obviously, and then I'll bleed the whole system again, and we'll have fresh fluid through the whole thing. Then I'll do that clutch pedal adjustment. Should be good to go down the road. Let's see. All what right, happens. so we're all buttoned up. We got the slave cylinder in, master uh, clutch cylinders in. We'll fire this baby up and let's see if she'll go in gear. Jump in here. I'm not going to go down the road right now because it's raining, but we can test it right here in the garage. Let's see what happens. We're in neutral. Push the clutch in to start the car. Give it a second, take off the emergency brake. I'm gonna let off the clutch. Clutch feels good, got good pressure. Can't really see it down there, but trust me on that. So before, while the car was running, we couldn't put it in gear. So the car is running, it's cold. Let's see what happens, clutch is in. Let's go for reverse, nice. Let off on the clutch. There we go. I like it. First gear. Off on the clutch. Feels good. Alright. So we're going to call that one a fixed. I'm going to put these things back on the uh, dashboard. These covers. Set the emergency brake here. Shut that off. So let's do a little recap. Pop the hood. Well, looks like the operation was a success here. Let's open the hood. Go over a couple of uh, final points. So we got the slave cylinder in, clutch master cylinders in. Everything looks nice and dry. The fittings are tight. Some advice. Make sure you uh, use a fender protector or some kind of towel or blanket over this thing. Not just to prevent it from scratching, but uh, that brake fluid is nasty stuff. And if it gets on your finish, it can ruin it real quick. Wear gloves. Nitrile gloves are the best. Latex gloves. Keep that stuff out of your skin or off your skin. So I hope that helps somebody out. Stay tuned for future videos. This one's ready to get back down the road now on its own. Appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click like. Take it easy.